All right, how many of you out there who are watching this video today are interested in making at least $500 per day extra? Regardless if you work a full-time or part-time job, the thing about trading futures is that you can actually trade 23 hours a day. I mean, the markets open up for 23 hours of the day. It's only closed one hour for maintenance, Monday through Friday, providing you opportunities both in the morning evening and in the uh, early morning hours to be able to trade so you know your, your schedules may um you know depending on when you work okay you can work a nine to five maybe you work a third shift maybe you work um you know in the evening hours or whatever the case but there's plenty of opportunity to be able to trade around your schedule is what i'm getting at and i'm going to show you a strategy and how i trade supply and demand because that's how i trade um looking for basically setups pulling where the market pulls back to zones that i have marked off of a slightly higher time frame chart uh where i used range charts i trade range charts uh because they're just cleaning to the eye to me i like the way they look so if you trade time base and you trade supply and demand or tick base or volume based charts then stick with that so i always talk about you know if you're a consistent trader you're profitable then maybe this video is not for you but if you're someone that's really interested and you know making that extra money five hundred dollars a day here's a way to be able to do so you know because at the end of the week that can be an easy 25 extra hundred dollars a week that you, that you can make what does that equate to on a, on a monthly basis a little bit over 10 grand you know so and you don't have to you know focus on making five hundred dollars a day there could be no goal maybe you just want to make an extra hundred dollars a day to pay for you know for gas for the week um or whatever it may be or have extra money for the groceries or for the utilities but here's a way I'm going to show you just using a simple strategy uh, surrounding supply and demand. It's my go-to bread and butter strategy. And we're going to start off by looking at a demand area. But before we do, I need for you to understand the, mo the most important piece to uh, the binder, the glue that holds everything together. It is all surrounds market structure. Market structure is just uh, the component that allows you to determine the direction of how you should be trading um you know based on how the market's moving okay so if it's making higher highs and higher lows we're breaking continuous structure to the upside then primarily all we want to look for is what uh fall in the higher time frame we want to look for demand zones all right and i'm going to show you the strategy step by step and how i do it it's pretty simple um this is my take on it this is how i trade it you know you may have put your own twist or variation to it but again let's just jump over to the charts right now uh, what we see going on, um, this was last week's trading okay, uh, sessions. We see the market making higher highs and higher lows. I've talked about this in plenty, plenty of videos. You can watch um, multiple videos here in the channel, and you'll see me talking about the same strategy. And the reason why I will continue to reiterate and talk about this strategy over and over and over is because I want people to I want to see them become successful. I want to see people be, uh, become profitable. Does it work every single time? No, there is no holy grail strategy that's going to work every single time. Why? Because trading, unlike a normal job to where we uh, get paid, you know, on a weekly or a monthly basis and it's as, as static or whatever the case is, you know, that set amount, we have to work hard when it comes to trading. We have to be vigilant and understand what the market is trying to do. And we have to trade around what we see the banks and institutions and how they're making their moves. Okay, that's why supply and demand is so important because it's aggressive areas of buying and selling. And you have to think logically what happens when the market um, has moved away from those areas and when it gets back to those areas. So as the market was making higher highs and higher lows, structure is being what? Broken to the upside. And you should know that the market can turn its direction the trend could turn the tide could turn and then you know we could go from an uptrend you know to where the market starts breaking structure back to the downside and then our whole mind shift and, and the uh, type of trades that we're looking to take um from you know having a bullish mode standpoint now we have a bearish mode so look what we see the market did here is is cap out right it started making uh a minute high and where it started to throw up or you know have multiple highs here watch not multiple highs equal highs okay with well, the market made a high pull back high pull back high equal highs that should tell you something that should alert you to let you know that the market is doing what it's having a hard time pushing forward through blockage okay it's clogged right there's something there there's something that's causing that brick wall that barrier to say we're not going any higher okay we want to push lower 
So when they start to, when the market starts to uh, move lower and starts to break out, break through areas of structure, you know, taking out structure below, making lower lows and lower highs lower, then we want to start to shift our mindset and start looking for shorts, but also be mindful too, just because there are, could be areas of supply when the market starts to break structure below, there's also areas of demand that you could take trades from as well. Some people may call that counter trend trading because even though we start to break structure to the downside here, there's demand areas. The thing about it is that as the market is approaching areas of demand, moving back to these zones, even though the structure of the market is shifting lower and we tell ourselves we should be looking for supply, we have to gauge. You should always pay close attention to price action as it is pulling back or retracing to a demand zone because now the market, the tide has shifted, okay? from a, a bullish standpoint to a bearish standpoint, but we can still be bullish, meaning that we could take, excuse me, long entries at key areas of demand, but we have to pay attention to price action as the market approaches those zones. So this is a demand zone. The market shifted, started breaking structure here to the down, to uh, back to the downside, to the left-hand side of the chart, as it was moving lower, making lower lows and lower highs. What do we have? A demand zone here. But as it was moving lower, you've got to understand there is areas of resistance lying in this area right here. So if we see rejection at this key area of demand right here, we have to be mindful of what can happen here. The market can get to this zone here, okay, this area of um, uh, re resistance right here, and stall, hold out, bounce, and possibly even push lower. So let's take a look. We've moved all the way down. We've got a high probability area of de uh, demand right here. Why is it high probability? Because there is an imbalance or gap resting back at the zone. I like to see what makes a zone, um, whether supply or demand, a high probability zone for me is if there is a gap resting back at the box, at the area in which I drew my demand zone here. Yes, there is right here. Okay. So when the market approaches back to that area uh, of this demand zone, all I need to do now is the second part of the strategy, we've, done, we've already completed step one, okay? Marked off a zone, structure was re-broken re to the upside, okay? We marked off a zone, the market retraces back to the zone, this key area of demand. Why is the demand? Aggressive buying. Is it high probability? Yes, because we have a uh, gap or imbalance back at the zone, okay? It gets there. Now, all we need to do is move down to our lower time frame chart, which we're going to do right now. All right, so this big blue rectangular box that you see drawn um horizontally across the chart that is that higher time frame um demand zone off of my 60 range higher base or higher time frame chart um so i'll mark that area now we're going to move forward now and, and follow me and you can write this stuff down you can stop take notes i highly recommend you can go back and watch the video please do yourself that favor because the next part of the strategy, the steps we're going to take now is the critical component pieces, okay? Uh, this is what is going to, to help us get into this trade at this higher problem, excuse me, at this higher area of demand zone off the higher time frame chart. Because uh, we're going to be looking for um, a demand setup to unfold on the lower time frame chart as well as rejection. So this is the higher time frame um, 60 uh, demand zone, 60 range demand zone. The market taps into it, as we can see right here. So we go back over here. We see it pull or tap back into it. This is on February the 5th, okay, around 1040 in the morning. All right. So the market taps into it. But as you can see, it's, it's, it's there's continuous movement to the downside where the market does what? It actually digs deeper into the zone. Now, I always talk about in... Uh, you know, when the, mar when the market hits a zone, um, pay close attention if it starts to dig deeper, I meaning starts to dive and move deeper into the zone, because sometimes that could be a signal that they just want to push lower. But now that we're in the zone, the next steps, and we're on the lower time frame 12 range chart, which is the entry chart that I use, okay, I need to see and I want to see the market start to shift back to the upside, all right? Meaning I want to see a break of structure to unfold on my lower time frame chart and a demand set, set up to unfold on the lower time frame chart. So what do we see right here? We see the market broke structure to the upside, right? As it pushed up, it broke structure here to the upside. But when it came back to this area right here, okay, pay close attention. Could you have gotten into this trade right here because there is a demand zone resting right here? So I'm going to take this little box right here, bring it over here. Okay. Demand coming out of this area here. We broke structure back to the upside. It pulled us back. All right. So, I mean, technically, yes, you could have. All right. And it is, it's, it's definitely valid. 
But the thing about it is, if you pay close attention, if you got into the trade, what did it do? It came back against you, correct? Because the, the, the market makers are going to test areas in which they know people are, or traders are getting to, to their trades. And, and another thing you have to keep mindful and be mindful of, there is liquidity resting right here. So they're going to try to test areas of liquidity before they start moving the market in a certain direction, back to the upside, all right? So all they do is, is you got into the trade, you have to know and be comfortable with nothing where to put a stop at. That's the people's biggest thing is that they get fearful. The market comes back against them. They may have their stop here or resting at the back end of this area of uh, demand here on our lower time frame, a uh, 12 range chart, and it stops them out. But but by, by not much though, just by you know a few points, okay? If you put your stop right here at the back end, which I, I always talk about, don't place your stop right, tick the tick on the back end because they will test that area. See how they did it right here and then, and then we'll push back up. You put the stop here at 560, okay? Uh, then you got stopped out. If Even if you put it back a, a few points here, you still got stopped out. They were testing lower areas. They were testing this, this area of um, uh, 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 demand right here, okay? And they were also testing this area of liquidity sitting right here. So you got stopped out, or maybe you got out the trade after the market started pushing up here. And then a, a technique I talk about is that if you notice that once the market starts pushing higher, and you get the first close of the candle to the downside and the second candle close to the downside, then go ahead and maybe get out the trade because had you, because have you if you did that, then you wouldn't have got stopped out here. You have to just wait it out to see what the market is really trying to do. We don't control the markets. It's, they're going to do what they want to do. Now, if I'm in this trade and I see this right here unfold where, it, where the market pulls back two candles and closes to the downside with two red candles, I'm out the trade. I'm going to sit back and wait and see what happens. They come back, they run your maybe your, where your stop had or where your stop was at, and then they push the market lower. But what did they do? All they did here was go down here, grab liquidity. They wick the area out. That's what happens when they are testing or, or wanting to grab liquidity. They'll wick out a um, area of where there's a low or a high at, okay, where there's equal highs or lows at. In this case here, there's equal lows right here. They wicked it out, grab liquidity just to, to run back to the upside, all right? So you're still in the zone. So what you do then at that point is that if you notice they come back, you got out the trade, you wait for the setup to unfold. You see them grabbing liquidity here. That is a big, big sign that they want to do what? They want to push to the upside. So you wait. You can get in a trade if you want to once you see the grab here, the liquidity grab, and maybe get in, get in at the break, uh, excuse me, and close of the um, candle, okay, the last bearish candle to the downside. Maybe wait, and wait till the market breaks and closes above it, then get into the trade and ride it back up to the upside. Or you can wait for a structural break to the upside and then a pullback. In this case here, uh, let me show you. Right here, okay, the market started breaking or taking out some internal area structure out of this swing right here. Can you get it, get into a trade? If Here's two things you wanna look at. Structural break to the upside, okay? You know, once the market starts to break higher and a pullback. So it broke this area structure right here, pulls back, creates a swing to the upside where there's demand out of. You want to see a structural break and a creation of demand. We're on a lower time frame. So if we go back and move this box over here, right here, okay? Structural break uh, right here. That's a minor area structure break. So be careful about those. Typically what you want to wait and see is a major area structure break broken, which is, um, well, on the lower time frame. This, this total swing right here. These little swings in between this bigger swing are internal areas or minor areas of structure. Uh, you can wait till it actually breaks a bigger area of structure right here above 572 and a quarter or 573 and look for a demand setup. In this case here, you would have had, had to wait till it pushes up here, pulls back, creates a demand area, aggressive buying, comes back to the zone and then take it back to the upside. Now, if you got in here on the internal break of the, uh, or a minor area of structure break, Right here, we pushed up, pulled back, got a demand creation, pulled back to the to, to the key area demand, and then got up. Then a little bit more risky, but you still were going into the upside because we want to take the trade back up to where we want to focus on back to our, our higher time frame or higher base chart. If you pay close attention here, there are imbalances that need to be filled. Uh, right here is an imbalance, and there's imbalances right here. The market is going to fill those areas back up if we get the rejection, okay, um, back over on the the lower time frame chart. And where is it going to aim for? It's going to aim to fill those imbalances off of the higher time frame. And you got to be mindful too that, but you got resistance right here. So once it gets to this area here, you know, it could, it could definitely bounce, reject, and maybe even push lower. So the aim is going to be to get in, in this area around 
uh, somewhere between 60 and, and maybe 67, 68 area. But again, we're looking for that rejection to take place to get us into a, a, a more precise entry point uh, on a lower time frame. And that's what, that's the reason why we, we scale down and look for opportunity for entries on our lower time frame. So all we're doing once we get back and it taps into the higher time frame demand is looking for rejection. OK, and that being the break of close of the excuse me, the break uh, of structure above where a demand area is created. Again, internal area structure break to the upside, pulls back, creates demand, pulls back to the demand area. Now on the lower time frame chart or lower base chart, all we all we want to see now is a break and close of a candle above right here at 68. Again, like I said, um, and then you get into the trade and we're going to take that trade to aim for um, this area. These the few of these areas of imbalances back up to here to 77 and a half uh, back up here to. 59 or excuse me 593 and you know aim for this area of resistance back to the top right here um and that's what it did it runs back up there as you can see here what did it go up to um 590 what did i say because it did bounce when it got here to this area of resistance yeah right here around uh, 600 okay so it got up there to yeah 600 right here and you see it pull back that was that red candle right here on the uh, higher time frame chart got up there pull back so, but then it, it kept pushing to the upside. So if it right here, when it got there and then it pulled back, if you looked over your lower time frame, you can see where it rejected to push higher and aim for this imbalance uh, area right here. Again, you know, it's going to aim for this right here. Um, and then it started pushing higher. But the thing is, I'm trying to say is that this is the setup and how I trade using the strategy each and every day. Marking zones off of a higher base, a higher time frame chart, moving down to a lower time frame entry chart to see if we get a you know a setup in this case here it was a demand setup all you're going to do when trading supply is just the opposite the same same process the same steps just looking for for the opposite mark the higher time frame based zone okay it must be a high probability zone where you have an imbalance or gap resting back at the zone in this case here high probability setup at a hot at a uh, demand area on a higher base chart then just move down wait for the market to tap into the zone show you a structural break to the upside where a demand area is created wait for the pullback to the demand area on the lower time frame chart get the break and close of the candle in the opposite direction on the lower time frame chart at the lower time frame demand zone and then take the trade aiming for those areas you know whatever the area may be that you see on your higher base chart gauge that aim for that those areas and as simple as that and that's what i want to talk about today was just showing you how it's Definitely possible whether you want to make an extra hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or more a day using this simple strategy, you can do so. Um, and it accumulates weekly if you do this, whether you work a full time or part time job, it works. Okay, you got to put in the time, back testing it, and then, uh, you know, just hopefully it works out for you. You know, I'm not telling anyone, uh, forcing anyone's hand to trade this way, I'm just showing you how I do it and how it works for me on a daily basis. So give it a try. Uh, outside of that, if you're interested in joining the Discord community, you know what to do. All you have to do is find the link down in the description portion of the video. Click on it, invite yourself in. It is free of charge. Anyone who's interested in becoming an elite member is $6.99 a month. Um, all you're doing is supporting me as a content creator. And I thank each and every one of you who value the content here on this channel and definitely support me as a content creator. And in return, just perks and rewards that you receive, right? Uh, that is through the, the YouTube tier membership program. If you're interested, there's a link right below the Discord link in the description portion of the video, or you can click on that join button right there and you'll see two tiers pop up. Make sure to choose the one that says Elite Channel Supporter. You get the trade breakdowns. Those are, those are videos, uh, video content that is made private, and that's where I go into detail on trades that I take uh, so that you understand the reasoning why I took those trades. You know, I walked you through my, 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 my um, uh, mindset the, the the process the thought process behind it and you also receive the video playlist okay but outside of that i appreciate everyone tuning in and watching today's video if you're not a current subscriber please take the time to go ahead and sub by clicking on the subscribe button down below make sure to turn on all your post notifications so you never never miss one of the uploads here on the channel and last but not least drop a thumbs up drop a like on the channel i mean excuse me not the channel but on the video um and in all the videos you watch okay i appreciate everyone tuning in see you in the next one take care